I don't need to tell you what cars these are. Even if you don't know anything about cars, you don't care about cars, you know these are Citroen 2CVs. The car that actually mobilized France post-war was launched in 1948. They made it for five decades and they stopped making it 30 years ago, but we're not gonna celebrate the fact that they stopped making it 30 years ago. This episode is all about this particular version, the 2C EV, a brand new old 2CV without an engine under the bonnet, but a motor. I'm here in the West Country at the 2CV shop, and this is probably one of the biggest places in the UK to get any bits that you want for the Dutch of I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. So we're on a trading estate in Wiltshire. Uh, if you hear a clanging noise uh, opposite uh, where Darren's business is, is a lovely little beer company. So they're cleaning out the kegs today. I'm not going to stop them. But Darren, I wanted to say, A, thank you very much for inviting me over to drive this, the right-hand drive. This is the first right-hand drive. Yeah, this is the pre-production one before there's a, a few alterations we've got to do. But, but yeah, it's, it's the very first right-hand drive electric 2CV. Now you are like, you're kind of Mr. 2CV in terms of the UK. The 2CV shop sells pretty much everything 2CV, I mean. Yeah, there's not much we cannot get. Um, we've probably got around about four and a half thousand lines everything from brand new body shell all the panels are available new um, and the panels are from original citroen tooling are they yeah um tires win window catches you can get um that the, they are made from original citroen tooling as well are they yeah so it's basically the interior I'm the UK distributor, a distributor for Mahari Club Cassis in the south of France. It's the 2C EV, great name. Yes, that is a wonderful name. <laughs> I got to thank the bloke one day who uh, gave me that name. Yeah. I, I have to say that I actually drove the very first version of this the, from France, the yep. left-hand drive Mule, which was in the sort of um, 007 livery, the for your eyes only livery. For your eyes only. Sheena Easton spec. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Um, and I, I, I named it the 2C EV and you did say, oh, is that all right if I use that name? And I was like, absolutely, go for your life. Because it's great to come and drive this for, for the first time. So you turn it on with the key in the ignition barrel. You hear two clicks and then you know it's initiated drive. Uh, fun function. You've still got your little hockey stick um, gear shifter up here, but you kind of pick a gear and leave it. And actually, Darren said he normally disconnects the clutch uh, so that people don't keep dipping the clutch out of habit because you don't need to. You engage these, I've got it in third, and you just leave it in third. <laughs> It's just one of these cars, isn't it? It just, you can't help but, you can't help but smile in a 2CV, whether, you, whether you're driving it or whether you're seeing someone in one. So here we are in third. We've got this aftermarket fuel gauge here, which isn't fuel, it's state of charge. Original speedo, being a 2CV, not a lot of instrumentation. In fact, just a speedo. And uh, optional heated windscreen on these cars and a completely flat piece of glass. Lovely spongy seats that will come out, quick release that you can use as a picnicking thing. And of course, a flat floor car as standard. And because I don't need my clutch leg anymore, I can almost kind of side saddle it. That's your soundproofing, which is just some carpet glued to the side. And you've got a thin spindly structure there, the tube steel construction. Am I right in thinking that this is an old, this is an old 2CV? Yeah, it's in, a 1986, I believe. Right, but it's, it's kind of brand new old. Yeah, it's got all brand new panels on it. Um, 
brand new chassis. It's been, the, the running goes gone all the way through, brand new interior. Um, wow. There is a brand new wheels and tires. It, there's not much. There's not much not brand new, no. It looks very new. Yes. I love it. And, and, and the thing is, is I don't tire of ever seeing a 2CV. Its simplicity is so charming. You know, you grab it and you <laughs> They're just so, they're just so amazing. So the conversion, the EV conversion, two CVs were front wheel drive, front engine, air-cooled twin. Yeah, the later ones like the 80s models were 682cc. Yeah, um, which yeah. was a colossal amount of power from memory. I did write 29 it down. 29 brake horsepower. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. About 30 horse. They started with nine horsepower, is that right? Yeah, in the, in the early days of the uh, 425. Wow. Yeah, no, that, that, that's hard work. But no, there, there, there's nothing wrong with a 62cc engine. It's yeah. bulletproof. It's a, it's a little screamer. You know, you can drive in the south of France. You know, we are still doing the petrol stuff, but bringing it into the future, we thought we would do an uh, electric version. <laughs> Just, it almost tries to tip you out of the car. It's like a game of buckaroo. I've never owned a 2CV. I've, I've had numerous friends who have had them and got them. Um, there is something so special about it. I don't think there's any coincidence that bare bones utilitarian cars that were kind of built to mobilize the masses have become so loved and so iconic and so cheerful. Fiat 500, this, the Beetle, the Volkswagen Type 2 van, Mini, all of those kinds of cars that were not expensive to buy. You could, you could order them in jolly colors. There was not a lot to them, easy to repair. It's no wonder that people are starting to spend real money on those cars now, because they're so, like I said, they're so characterful. They're more like a pet than a car. This principle of converting a, a classic to electric, it's been done a lot with other iconic cars at the moment. Yes, yeah. um, you know, Fiat 500, Beetle, that kind of thing. We're seeing it more and more. What you're saying is it's giving the customer the option you yeah. you still cater for the piston yeah car. we certainly Absolutely. do that's the main part of our business yeah. but you know if you live in london um and you, i or you want an electric car because a, a classic petrol car is a lot more maintenance than an electric car yeah and some people just want to get in to turn the key and go yeah not after have it worry about getting it started after keeping it in the garage all winter bring it out for the summer oh about is flat you know. Well, of course, it's lack of use yes, that is, these yeah. things suffer from. So yeah. this almost encourages you to use it more. Um, but of course, it comes at a cost. Yes, it's it does, not going to yeah. appeal to everybody. No, no, we, that's what we say. Don't but we? I, I can totally see this. Someone who's got enough cash to have this as your sort of second house car. Yeah, that sits in your second home, or something like that. Or like you say, in the in the in the capital, in in Paris, it would be blooming perfect. Yeah, yeah, no, because those. Obviously, all the regulations are coming in now in the big cities. You can't, you can drive your petrol car, but you get fined. You know, you've got to pay a lot of money for it. Yeah. So, and the what we try to do with this kit, I think we have done it. We didn't want to lose the DNA of the car, the saw of the car. Yeah. You know, it, the it's not it is not a performance related kit. <laughs> so it is it is we try to keep it the same as the petrol version, the power, okay, the speed. Yes, it is a little bit quicker off the mark, um, but it's not tire smoking quick. It's not double no. the, the performance we of the We did not want to do that. This is full throttle. But you know what? What's bizarre is it's only, uh, it's, it's just under 20 kilowatts of power, 120 newton meters of torque. So it's, it is a bit quicker than a standard 2CV flat twin, but it feels nippy. Yeah. Weirdly, it does feel actually, it feels very nippy. And of course, it, there's no, there's no gears to rattle through. It'll just pull in fourth if you want it to. And you can look at the, the stats of this car, the performance stats, and you can, you can shake your head and mutter and say, it's just not good enough. But you know what? 
When you're doing 40 in this, it feels way, way faster than 40. The combination of the suspension, the lack of safety, I think it's pretty well judged for the era of the car and the kind of use that it's going to get. 55 miles of range uh, WLTP, which is not going to suit everybody, and I'm certainly not going to. I'm not going to sit here on camera and say that <clears throat> that will suit everyone because the reality is, an EV 2CV. A 2C EV won't suit everybody. I quite happily own a piston 2CV. They're not exactly thirsty. They, they, they were designed as a sort of 80 to the gallon car. But just like Fiat 500s being converted and Beetles and bubble cars and all those things, people are willing to spend proper money on them to suit their lifestyle and where they might maybe live. And if you live in an area where they're outlawing piston cars from city spaces and that kind of thing that's where this starts to make sense this is almost future proofing the peasant icon so this is the business and this is the electric motor and i can see that you've still got because that's the linkage isn't it that's yep. the gearbox yeah that's the original 2 cv gearbox with the uh, disc brakes in the front oh yeah inboard discs yeah 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 they're, yeah, they're good so innovative at the time um the electric motor's brought it to the, the gearbox. There is a clutch in there. There but, is. But you don't use a pull away in third gear or fourth. There's yeah. no need to change gear on, on the move. Yeah. Um, this is, like I said before, the prototype um, right-hand drive car. So the wiring loom is out of a left-hand drive car. So we need to, need to alter it. Um, for starters, we only got one heater. Okay. Uh, on a British car, we have two. Um, okay. Because the French cars only got one he messed up with a windscreen on the driver's side. The passenger's got nothing. But, you know, this is a posh model. So he's got two. We've got to put in as a heater I love on. the level of luxury in 2CV world is just, yeah. Okay, so this, like you say, this is a, a, a bit of a prototype, this particular version. Yep. But the I can see the, the EV parts, obviously orange high voltage cables. There's the motor. So air-cooled. Yeah, it's certainly air-cooled. Um, DC motor. Yeah. Yeah. What sort of kilowatt output? It's about 15. It's, it's 15 kilowatt output on that. Um, we have um, mapped it so it doesn't give full torque off the go because it tends to turn the gearbox to, to dust. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's been yeah. So that's been mapped to to, to lower the power. Yeah. In, in here we got the uh, 12 volt battery. Yeah. So when you turn the ignition on, it tests the system before it opens the high voltage system. Yep. This is the charger for the battery when you plug it into the mains. Yep. This is the control module. Yeah. More the gubbins gub in there. And it's, 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 it's just very simple. It's a lot of room, a yeah. lot of spare space. I like it. I, I, I'm always amazed. It's great. You can see the chassis. You can see that amazing independent suspension that mm. two CVs have. The, the sort of axle articulation on them as standard is ludicrous, which is why they're almost better off-road than they are on-road, really. So what's it like at 40 miles an hour, you're saying? Well, like this, wind starts to make its, itself known. Uh, down these back lanes, it feels way quicker than 40, I'm not gonna lie. But the seats are so comfortable. The steering's so wibbly wobbly and enjoyable. And of course, it's not a heavy car. So even when you hit the brakes hard, because this is a later 2CV, it's on disc brakes. And they bite nicely because you're only adding 30 kilos of extra weight with that battery pack at the back. This kit is also, like I said, it was developed in the south of France by Mahari Club Cassis, and this kit is homologated in France, and it will have homologation in the rest of Europe soon. Um, what is not so important for this country, the UK, but in Europe, any classic car conversion, it's got to be homologated. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's gone. It's gone for all the safety testing. It's 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 not just somebody in the shed knocking it together. It's it's, it's been properly tested. Yeah. I might do a naught to. I won't do a naught to sixty run because I don't think we've got space. Let's do a naught to forty. <laughs> it's funny because. Um, forty. It's, it feels so much quicker than that. It's odd. It's so odd. 
what I love about two CVs, this sort of classic, is that because the aftermarket parts are so readily available, you can kind of go as wild as you want. And of course, it can keep lots of the existing cars alive. And, and, and to that end, I think this isn't sacrilegious. Some people might see EV converting a car like this sacrilegious, but I think what it does is it offers it to a different type of person, a different type of classic car enthusiast, or maybe someone that would never have bought a classic if it weren't for this kind of convenience. And I'm all for that. This will do, yeah, 55 to 60 miles range, and it does have regen. So we're going to come down a hill now, and it's a steep hill, so I have got to use the brakes a bit. But when I, when I come off, I can definitely feel the motors harvesting some of that power back into the batteries. And I love the fact that this is even lower maintenance than an already low maintenance car. I mean, two CVs are about as simple as they get, but you EV it and it, there's even less things to go wrong. There's even less things to change. Nice. Yeah. Nice. The bloke who thought of that must have been... Bloody genius, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so the battery box. Now, I was, I, was, I was on your website actually looking. So you, you can choose between two positions of the battery. You can in the UK, yes. Okay, so um, this is the, the normal this, fitment. Yeah, yeah, this is a lowered fitment. Um, so it's down low, so you've got more room and it lowers the weight a little bit, or we can add the battery. So instead of being there, it's sort of level with the floor this way, um, but it does allow you room underneath just for your, for, for your boot space. I see. Um, we don't supply a spare wheel um, because as long as people maintain, it, maintain their cars, you don't need them. Yeah, yeah. So that so you, you're obviously you, you're using up some of the boot space, but there is space around it depending on which one you go for. And there's I was, I was looking at what other options there are. So basically, I can turn up to the two CV shop with a two CV, yes. and you'll you'll EV convert it. Yeah. And obviously, you could do any level of restoration if I wanted it. Yeah, you can or, do that. I can just phone you up and go, I don't have a 2CV down, I've never owned one, but I want one of these. Can you sort everything? Yeah, we, we, we can do a turnkey petrol or electric car. Yeah. Um, the electric ones, they're starting from around about 29,000. Okay. The turn, turnkey car up. Yeah. Um, the conversion kit at the moment in time is 16,400 fitted. Fitted? Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, so you bring a 2CV to us, 10 days later, you can drive it away electric. It's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah. That is quite cool. Oh, that indicator, listen to how loud, that's a vocal indicator. So by modern EV standards, the battery pack is almost the sort of size that you'd get in a plug-in hybrid rather than a, a full EV. But of course, this is a car that typically you wouldn't use on a long journey. It's more of a town car or a sort of fair weather short distance runner plus it's not a very heavy car and you can't load it up with batteries it's only 30 kilos heavier than the standard car and i'm pretty sure the standard cars are 600 and something kilos you can't fast charge it so that 10 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack lithium iron but can't really be be fast charged it's a three pin type job uh, three and a half hours to charge f uh, fully from zero, which is a, a, apparently a typical French lunch break. Just a typical French lunch break. Yeah, it's a weird little connector, that. Yeah. Isn't it? It's got a little condom. <laughs> yeah, I've never... <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, it's what they put for, her, for the homologation. Um, we, we, we do offer a type two adapter. Okay. So you can actually, if you do want to charge, because most, most of the public charging is that, it's type two. Yeah, type two or three pin plug. Yeah. Um, so we do, we do offer- A uh, conversion yeah. for that. Okay, that's cool. The, the premise of the car, I had to carry four people and 50 kilos of goods at 30 miles an hour on an unpaved road, perhaps a ploughed um, field. Uh, that, was the, that was the design- the, um, Yeah, the- Across the- Requirement. A, yeah, basket of eggs across the plough field. That's the old one. And you can still do it. 
I've done it. I've done it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I nearly had a horrific crash, but yeah, I've done it. Look at this. Any 2CV owner out there who knows the perils of rust, look at this, look. Look, the beauty of brand new body shells and brand new chassis. It's just absolutely all new metal. Painted any colour you like. So 36 different choices of colour and fabric for door cards and headlining. 26 choices of hoods. These little swatches here are for the hood fabrics. And then the colours are endless. This is just a little serving suggestion. These, these are original Citroen colours, but you can, of course, if you wanted to, you can order a turnkey 2C EV in whatever colour you want. And then you can go to town on all of the different fabrics, the, the textiles. It's brilliant. Just casually stacked here, you can buy a brand new body shell for a 2CV, I think they're about six grand. That chassis downstairs and pretty much everything in between over there on those shelves. I think you'd, I just forget how, how enjoyable a 2CV is. You know, the future is not necessarily building cars to go as fast as possible. Maybe it's about having a car that fits down a narrow lane, gets you from A to B with a smile on your face, and it's a bit more responsible to, uh, for air pollution. Maybe this is the perfect everyday car. I'm not going to mention, I'm just going to pull in here. As I let this modern Mercedes by, see everyone gives you the thumbs up. Everyone, everyone lets you pull out. I'm not going to mention though, uh, Euro NCAP. Two CVs don't like, they don't like talking about Euro NCAP. If you're bothered about safety, you tend not to buy a car like this, I'd say. How else can I end? this episode without saying, this is the kind of car which if you look at it on paper, it looks like quite a disappointing thing that costs quite a lot of money. But you can't look at it like that because what this is, 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 is in a way, the offer to future-proof a car which almost everybody in the world smiles when they see. It's a fantastic car, the 2CV in any form, piston form or EV form, but I think this conversion works for this kind of car. It's not overpowered, it's not ridiculous, it's not laden with too much technology. And actually, are you realistically gonna go on a long journey in a 2CV? I would say most people probably aren't. That said, a conversion like this is never gonna be for everybody. If you're gonna spend 40 grand on a 2CV, you've got to be pretty committed in the first place. But what I like about what Darren's doing at the 2CV shop is he's at least doing it right with a proper system that actually works in this environment. What I now want to do is buy that and put the EV in that one. But sadly, it's not for sale. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. I've really enjoyed driving this car. It's a reminder that sometimes cars are more like pets the natural forms of transport. You don't need to drive fast. You can just cruise around and just wobble a bit. <laughs> it's just so much fun. I'm gonna just keep doing this on my own in a car park. Nothing weird about that. <laughs>